Okay, guys, we've got the return of the Versus series, um, something that I haven't done for a while. I, I don't know why I forgot about it, I think. Um, it was getting a lot of views. It was very interesting. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to look at why, strangely, not all bold men are equal. So everybody is scared of going bold. All the, every man is scared of going bold when they're young, right? When it happens, it's never that bad. Um, but there is one group of bold men who seem to be killing it in Hollywood, in public, whatever. And that's muscular bold men. And no matter who you are, where you're from, what your experience in life is, you have to admit that there is a massive clear difference between muscular bold men and skinny or fat bold men in terms of attraction, how they're perceived in society. You know, a, a big bold guy in the gym who might be six foot tall, built like a brick shit house, you know, not like a steroid type, um, but has an attractive body, uh, maybe just shy of like The Rock or something like that. That's a big stream, right? Um, but you see somebody like Vin Diesel, Jason Statham, um, all of these guys that are, you know, bold but in great shape seem to be considered as leading figures in terms of attraction in Hollywood. And it's the same in real life. You, like I said, if you see a guy in the gym who is in very good shape, quite a tall guy, um, you know, who's bold, women see that guy as super attractive. Whereas if you get a guy who is, you know, either fat or skinny and bold, it just doesn't have the same effect. And it's strange because... If all of those guys had hair, yeah, you'd expect maybe the more muscular guy to get more women. But you wouldn't expect the difference to, to be that big. But when it comes to bold guys, muscular bold guys are like gods in Hollywood. And then skinny and fat bold guys are just considered as kind of like the comedy kind of aspects of films. Or they just take on minor roles or they're kind of like the bullied role <laughs> in certain films. So, um, why is that? And I've got a theory. So, I think, because all attraction is health, and I'm going to do a video on this soon, and I think it comes down to the reason, the perceived reason for why that person lost their hair. So, if somebody's fat, and, um, and I have no problem with saying the word fat, because I've done a video on it, I think fat guys are in the perfect position to have the perfect body. I'll bring that up on screen if I can, or at the end. Check that out. Very interesting. But fat guys who have lost their hair, it's perceived that they are unhealthy, hence their hair fell out. So probably hormone imbalance, low testosterone. And it's the same with smaller skinny guys. So you'd assume, okay, he's small and skinny, he's lost his hair, that means he hasn't got access to nutrients or his testosterone's low, hormonal imbalance, estrogen spiked, he's not very masculine, Hence why his hair fell out. Whereas a guy who's big, strong and muscular and bold, that would, I think that makes people perceive that guy as having so much testosterone that it created a hormone imbalance and his hair fell out. I think it's just that scale. I think guys who are big and muscular, don't get me wrong, it looks good too. You know, if you're a big, strong, lean guy, there's kind of like lines here and there and around here, which you know, strengthen your face, make it a little bit stronger. But I definitely think it's the perception of why you're bold. Because maybe a skinny guy and a fat guy is perceived as a weakness, as a fault. Whereas a big, strong, bold guy is perceived as he's lifted so many weights or he's got so much testosterone that it's made his hair fall out. And uh, when people say, oh, too much testosterone makes your hair fall out. Oh, oh we found studies that too much estrogen makes your hair fall out. It's both. It's a hormonal imbalance. So let's say you've got middle bracket here. This is the safe ground. Under that is low testosterone. Above that is high testosterone. In terms of a hormonal imbalance, both produce DHT. Because if you've got too much testosterone, some will be converted into DHT. So that will make you lose your hair. If you don't have enough testosterone, your body will produce DHT, which is like a stronger version, by combining with the extra estrogen that you have to create DHT. And that will make your hair fall out too. So I think that lower bracket of guys who are out of shape, who you would you would assume have lower testosterone, people then perceive that as a weakness, as a fault. Whereas on the upper end, it's perceived as, oh, this is a strength. 
This guy is so fertile, he's got so much testosterone that his hair fell out. And it's that perception of how it happens that I think determines attraction and the difference between muscular bold guys and skinny and fat bold guys or just average looking bold guys. And um, to wrap this up, because I know it's a versus series and I usually decide which is better, I think it's pretty obvious, right? But if you are a guy who's losing his hair, and I've made a video on this as well, I know it was in there as one of the tips, get big. Just add some man muscle, add some man meat to that body. Just start lifting heavy. You know, you might have been a cardio type of guy before, a marathon runner. And I'm not telling you who to be, but if you're really interested in attracting women and um, attractive women, skip that. Get in the gym, start lifting heavy. You've got, you've got no real choice if you want to merge the two together.